Good morning and welcome. In the past eight weeks, the landscape of construction has changed tremendously due to COVID-19, but changes in construction projects are nothing new to any of us. We've always been an industry that can react to changes and adjust plans, but up until now, it's been a very manual process. On behalf of Ellis Technologies, I'm pleased to welcome you to our Project Recovery War Room series that will showcase how you can quickly model changes to your projects and deliver accurate plans that take constraints into consideration. My name is Jennifer Woodford and I'm responsible for the Alice Customer Success Team. I'm happy to introduce our presenter today. Juan Gerardo is a Customer Success Manager who comes from a boots on the ground construction background and works with Alice customers across the globe. Juan will be showing you how Alice has helped model specific changes due to the COVID-19 crisis for some of our customers. Juan, I'm gonna hand it over to you. And while I do that, I'm also going to open up an initial poll for the audience so that we can learn a little bit more about all of you. And so we're hoping that you can share what your role is, um, and then we will uh, we'll move forward with the presentation. Uh, hi, Jen, thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in the Project Recovery War Room. It's really a pleasure to chat with you today. Uh, I hope you've had your first cup of coffee already because we're going to take you uh, on a journey through the Alice universe where uh, you know, construction plans are generative and resilient. And I'm going to explain what that really means over the next couple of slides. Wonderful. Rocky. Hey, Juan, before we yeah. go on, let's. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll since we've gotten a good number of answers or received a good number of answers already. And I... Uh, Hopefully I can share this so that you can see what we have here um, from a distribution of who's on the phone today. Um, it looks like we've got a number of people from a project management and scheduling and pre-construction, and then we also have others. So we definitely need to uh, dive into that a little bit more. But I'll hand, things, I'll hand things over to you now. All right, thanks for sharing that. And we'll definitely make sure to cover how uh, you can use generative construction in pre-construction as well as actively in management and why this is really important to executives and construction companies moving forward. Uh, along the way, please feel free to submit some questions. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know that you're there. And uh, any thoughts that come up, uh, we will answer them collect all the questions and answer them at the end of the, closer to the end of the webinar. So the simulation that you see in front of you is just one of over 8 billion in construction volume that we've had the privilege of working on over the last quarter. And I can tell you honestly that every project has been impacted by COVID in one way or another. Uh, the global pandemic has actually caused most commercial projects to shut down. And there's also been shortages in the supply chain leading to delay of critical materials arriving to the job sites. On this project in front of you, the COVID impact actually delayed the project by 115 days. A baseline schedule of 922 calendar days was blown out to 1,031 days. Now, Using Alice, the good news is that we were able to generate hundreds of recovery options in, in a couple of hours and identify a way that they could manage their risk and also recover the schedule as needed. Now, contractors and developers want to know two things when it comes to risk management during these uncertain times. How to simulate the impact of COVID. And this is important that you can use in really communicating with your subcontractors and with owners and investors on potential claims, how this is gonna impact productivity on your projects, and also how to generate recovery schedules. During this time of uncertainty, showing resilience, showing that there are multiple options, that your plan uh, is, has really explored different scenarios and that you found the best plan for the project. So why would you wanna simulate the COVID impact? This may be due to a stoppage of work uh, because of the actual lockdowns taking place all over the world. 
Uh, thousands of jobs just in North America are shut down. And we're also seeing this in Asia and Europe and uh, South and Central America as well. And also what we're seeing is enhanced safety and testing. So now job sites are actively temperature testing before you enter the site, contact tracing, making sure that you haven't been exposed. And this is significantly reducing productivity on the jobs. It's a, it's a long line just to get into the job site. And then example is actually a recent example that I, I found out this week is um, on a man lift uh, on you know high rise projects. Typically the man lift or the temporary elevator is going to transport 25 to 20 workers on one ride going to each different floor. Those man lifts now have to preserve social distancing. And that means that instead of 25, they can fit five workers on that lift. And contractors want to be able to model those reductions in productivity and, you know, use this uh, really artificial intelligence and generative construction simulations to show clients and, sh and collaborate and identify impacts where needed and also recovery when it's essential. And social distancing isn't just impacting, uh, you know, mobilization into the job site. It's also about how you approach work on a 5,000 square foot slab where originally you may have been able to put 25 workers, you may now have to reduce that crew to preserve at least uh, you know, uh, 100 square feet or, uh, of, of space for those workers so that they can have good social distancing. And additionally, folks, when they are working in close proximity are wearing face masks and gloves. Now, at the same time, we wanna provide a uh, high level of confidence and the industry knows that we will recover and contractors are eager to get back to work. So then the next question, once you've understood how this pandemic is impacting your project, how it's going to impact your productivity, how you can continue building with social distancing, then you really wanna focus on how am I gonna recover my schedule? How are we gonna do this while automatically resequencing activities? And a saturation analysis is actually something that is very unique to Alice and one of my favorite features in the software. It's actually when you tell the software that there is no limitation on your available crews. So what Alice will do is it'll explore millions of different simulations based on the parameters that you've provided, but flooding the project with resources. Alice will flood the project with crews if you want it to, also, it can do this with equipment like cranes, excavators, and also with your material, such as your formwork utilization, or also your uh, you know, concrete pores and concrete pore productivity, or your formwork and productivity. So these are all uh, scenarios that you can quickly understand with Alice, how, how much faster can we really get it with flooding it with resources? Sometimes owners just wanna say flood it with resources, but there's points when even adding more workforce isn't gonna solve the problem. And then you have to look at resequencing your activities, maybe adding more equipment or materials or increasing your working hours. Typically, this is a manual process, but leveraging artificial intelligence, contractors can do this in minutes. And when you want to increase your working hours, maybe it's a double shift or a staggered shift or Saturday work, you can understand how that change will ripple throughout your entire system with generative construction simulations. So what is a generative construction simulation? You've heard me mention this a couple of times now. And in order to really break down how this works, I'm going to step back and explain to you how Alice works. For those, for those folks that are newer on the line, uh, I think that this will be really helpful. So generative means that you're exploring millions of construction options. You're not in the what we call lonely dot universe where you're stuck to one two dimensional plan and you have to really kind of keep updating and tracking to that baseline plan. Of course, you want to have a baseline that you can use and export to P6, but you also want to have resilience in your plan. You want to understand how you can quickly reshuffle your resources, your activities, or your working hours in order to generate recovery plans. And Generative provides this for you. Construction at a very simple level is bricks on top of each other. And this is actually how I started my construction career, building brick walls. And 
but at, at a more complex level, it, it's definitely, uh, you know, hundreds and millions and billions of dollars of material that need to be stacked and organized and assembled in the field. And then the simulation shuffles these resources through space and time to build your project. So you no longer have to manually resequence activities. The simulation is doing this for you while automatically ensuring constraint resolution. So when you say that you need a crane, making sure that crane is available and there's not two crews waiting for the hook time. So why is this more important now than ever? First of all, it's rule-based. So as construction schedules are having to shut down, adapt, modify things, they, can, they know that these changes are rippling throughout their system. So they're not only, not only understanding the impact on today and tomorrow, but the impact on the, the project the entire way down the road. And it's really fast. Typically, these level of detail exercises could take you several months. With Alice, you have the results in minutes. So how does Alice work? There are three fundamental pages in Alice. That it's cloud-based. So you can access it uh, online from really a job site or anywhere you are with an internet connection. And the first page is the planning. This is where you set up your project. You're going to import a 3D model of your project. It's important to note that this does not have to be a very detailed construction coordination model. Those models can take several years to develop. We're talking about a very low level of detail model. Maybe your architect has already used a schematic or conceptual model to design the project. Or for many of our clients in infrastructure, we actually develop the model for them in a couple of days. And using this model, we're gonna attach recipes to the elements that you're gonna be building in the field. Recipes are a little bit of the secret sauce of Alice. It's really how we collect your knowledge, your constraints on how this project is gonna get built. You really need the human input to provide, hey, this is the sequence of activities. For example, for a column, the recipe would be form, reinforce, or strip. And you can build these recipes and connect them to your elements. Now, you don't have to manually connect it to each one. You actually can just select all of your columns and attach the same recipe. And that's one of the really powerful parts of generative design and generative construction that what typically was manual, you can do in minutes. Now, once you've set up your plan, which is typically takes uh, a couple of hours for the larger projects in you know, the billion to $2 billion range, maybe it's a two day setup. And then you send your plan to the simulator. Now, Alice is doing the number crunching for you, exploring millions of different options. And as it goes through these options, it learns which one produced the fastest schedule, and then it focuses on those. So as you watch Alice run schedules later today, you're gonna to see that the duration may go from 1,000 days to 950 to 920, and then end up at 890. Alice continues to uh, accelerate the schedules by, by trying different variations of crew mixes and equipment based on the constraints and the parameters that you've set, and then identifies the best plan. Now, Alice isn't just going to give you one plan. It's going to give you the best five or six, maybe 10 out of uh, the millions that it explored. And those plans are now, you've, you're viewing them in the explore page. Uh, each color represents a different simulation scenario that you've run. And each dot represents a different 4D schedule. You can click on that dot, which I'll show you, and we can now analyze the schedule. Now, analyzing the schedule, you, you can look at it from many dimensions. The Gantt, traditional process of looking at schedules, and the P6 are just one feature or one export that you have. You can also look at the cost over time, understanding the cost and schedule impact of design changes or of construction changes. And you also have a 4D. Now, superintendents love the video. They literally see it and they say, wow, Alice is showing me what I see in my head. The simulation of the assembly process with your contractors uh, color coded and really sequencing and showing where contracts are, are overlapping and uh, having task cards for durations, just like a pull plan. 
And then really one of my favorite parts are the analytics. All of this planning that you did up front, Alice reshuffles this, optimizes it, and then gives you a robust suite of analytics. You can look at your project pre-utilization, understanding the efficiency of different plans. You can look at your material consumption. And one of the interesting things that we find is often material consumption is one of the biggest bottlenecks on projects. So by increasing your quantity of form work, you can easily accelerate your schedule 30 to 60 days. Or actually, you can significantly reduce your cost by ensuring that all of the form work that you buy, you're actually using. The data in Alice gives you this level of intelligence. Now that we've set the framework for how Alice works, I'm gonna go back to the case study and show you some examples of the generative simulations we ran for this project. Please remember to uh, drop some questions in if you have any. So this is a project that started construction in January, 2019. At peak production, they're having over 500 workers on the site. And the GC has a self-performing concrete group. So the superstructure is the most high risk part of the project for them. And they really wanted to ensure to optimize it. They know that once they top out the concrete, they can come in with a pretty strong cadence on the interiors. Now, the simulations that we ran for this project modeled the impact of the factory shutdown that actually delayed the procurement of critical steel for the project. Additionally, then they got hit with a 30-day stoppage of work. We modeled all of these impacts in, in, in Alice and then understood very quickly how we could recover, reshuffling crews, materials, and equipment to get pretty close to our baseline schedule. The baseline schedule was 922 days. And when I say pretty close, I actually mean within 1%. It got blown out to 1,031 days. And then they were able to identify a recovery schedule within two hours that was 925 days. This is what a resilient construction plan looks like. And then when they started work again, they actually had to deal with reduced workforce on the job site and reduced productivity due to social distancing. So then they needed to reevaluate their schedule again and run some simulations on how they could model the reductions in workforce, which we'll show you today, and reductions in productivity due to social distancing. So going back to our framework of simulating the COVID impact, and generating recovery plans. Remember, the baseline schedule was 922 days. When the delay in the procurement of steel hit, the project was delayed to 967 days. We leveraged Alice's saturation analysis tool to actually identify that we could recover the schedule with additional resources so Alice ran these quick simulations and identified that by adding more critical crews at the right time, they could get the schedule to 915 days. So they weren't too worried. They knew that they had options. But then they got hit with delay number two, 1,031 days due to the stoppage of work, completely shutting down the site. Now we were able to model this impact in Alice and show the stoppage of work and the delay of steel. But then we ran another saturation analysis, flooding the project with resources. And then even with Alice adding as many resources as was optimally possible and efficient, because one thing to keep in mind is that Alice will still aim to reduce the amount of time that your crews are standing around. So when you do a saturation analysis, uh, Alice may only allocate one or two crews if that's actually the most efficient way to go. But when it sees an opportunity to accelerate the project, it may throw 10 crews on it because it sees that by adding those crews, you can significantly accelerate the project and reduce the idle cost at the same time. So with the saturation analysis, we found that we were now at 970 days. Not even you know, additional crews or flooding it with resources was gonna get this schedule back on track. 
So then we had some other levers to play with. We looked at adding an additional two hours of overtime for the concrete pour crew, the rebar crew, and the carpenters. And we found that by adding overtime starting in February throughout the duration, throughout the rest of the project, they could actually get the project to 925 days. And then we started looking at how we could achieve those 925 days while reduce, reducing the amount of workforce on site. And we found that we could actually make reductions of 10% on the workforce while still preserving the schedule. And then with 20% reductions, we could get within 10 days of the baseline schedule. Now I'm gonna jump over to Alice and actually show you this in the software. So going back to those three pages in Alice, I'm actually gonna explain how each one works. And then we can uh, go into looking at the simulations and the results. So this is the explore page where you're exploring different schedules. You can quickly generate a new schedule by modifying your labor, your equipment, your materials, or your production rates. Each color represents a different schedule scenario. So in purple here, with the lowest cost, we see our baseline schedule. We see in pink, the first delay, and then the second delay. And up here, we see various options of different recovery plans that were explored. Now, each of these schedules can be analyzed. And it actually pops out to a 4D of your project. So here, is the analyzer in Alice. We've got the simulation of the assembly process, which you can look at by day, week, or month. You can see one key thing to note is that you only give Alice one date, your start date, or your as-built date. And then Alice actually assigns all of the other dates and durations based on your plan that you created. Now, I can also filter this and say, hey, I only want to look at my poor crew. And I can filter the 4D. And now I'm just looking at the poor crew activities. In the task card and in the 4D. I can also look at my crew utilization only for my poor crews. So let's go to today. Now I can see from looking at my poor crews that most of the time we're using two crews, then we could jump up to four and six and we peak out at eight crews, but we can run some schedules and identify, could we reduce the poor crews to six, seven, five or four? And how is that going to impact their schedule performance and their activities on site? I can also look at my material consumption. So understanding what critical materials are being used and at what time. This is especially important for form work. Where you can understand when your form work is being utilized and when it is being released. I can also look at equipment utilization. And with the filters, you can really isolate for what you wanna optimize. Hey, let's look at the concrete pump truck utilization. This is really a level of data and detail that has been unprecedented for the industry. And now you can really make data-driven decisions. We can also see our cost over time. I'm going to explain how cost works in Alice. You have your direct cost, which is the cost of your direct cost of your crews working or your equipment being utilized or your material uh, being set in place. And then you also have the idle cost. Most contractors today do not have a way to calculate idle cost. An idle cost is a measure of the efficiency of your plan. The way that we calculate it is the amount of time that your crews are standing around. So if you bring a crew on site, 
on Monday and then they leave Tuesday and then they come back on Wednesday, that Tuesday is an idle cost for your crew. So this is how Alice optimizes not only your schedule duration, but also the cost of your project because it ensures that it reduces the amount of time your crews are standing around. And this is also what subcontractors and self-performing guys really care about. Coming in, getting the work done and getting out as quickly as possible. You can also identify the idle cost for your equipment. So is there a benefit to getting that crane off the job in five months instead of six months because you're paying that additional month for the crane? Now, the analyze and the explore page are where you spend most of your time in Alice, running schedules, looking at the analytics. The prepare page is where you actually set up your plan. You import your model and you build your recipes. So you can see here that we've applied recipes for all the columns. We've got different recipes for the slabs. And I can show you what these recipes look like. Here's a simple formwork recipe uh, for forming and stripping the columns. Now, when we did uh, a fractional reduction of crew sizes, how we were able to do that is actually by setting a parametric recipe where we're looking at the number of columns that they can pour, they can form, pardon me, uh, uh, combined with the production rate of those crews and the number of crews on the job so that we can quickly understand how reducing the number of crews is going to actually uh, or reducing the number of workers is going to impact the schedule and we'll actually do a schedule run of that right now to show you an example so on this recovery schedule we're going to say hey instead of a four more crew size of 10 let's go to eight and run a schedule. Let's note that. Now that you understand the different pages in Alice, let's dive into the data. We had a baseline schedule of 922 calendar days. That's 671 working days. We can see that the crown was topping out, the steel was topping out on November 16th, 2021. With this baseline schedule was exported to P6. Then in green, we see the first impact, the shutdown of the factory. The way that we modeled this in Alice was that we actually just put in 30 days of lag for the brace beams, which were the materials that were impacted. So this was a quick change and then a five minute schedule run. And we said, okay, we see what the impact is now. Alice automatically reshuffled and resequenced your crews and gave you a best case and even you know, a not as good scenario or a worst case scenario. You have multiple plans and you can compare what's the difference between these plans. We can actually do that now. So we see the baseline schedule here. And then in pink, is that shut down? And now we can see how Alice allocated those crews as well. And here's an example where we actually told Alice, hey, you can have 10 structural steel crews, but it only used nine. Then we got hit with the second delay, delay number two. And let's actually look at that, how this looks on the schedule. While that's loading, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions, please. Uh, feel free to send them in. So Juan, there is a question. Someone has asked, how long does it take to set up a project in Alice? Yeah, 
Great question. So typically, uh, you can set up a project in one to two days. Uh, or if you're an experienced Alice user, this is for someone that we're really training you uh, at this time and also teaching you how to use software and set up the project. But for uh, a more experienced Alice user, you can actually um, set up a project in a couple of hours. But the process is importing a model, which we'll do for you, and then actually uh, just setting up your recipes and running schedules. And if you already have a recipe database, you can actually reuse many of your recipes. So we can see here the stoppage of work. Now, we did a saturation analysis on the second recovery plan, and we found that even by flooding it with resources, we could not get to 970, not get back to the baseline of 922. So then we said, all right, that's not going to get us there. Let's try something else. And so then what we did was actually adding recovery schedule number three. We added two hours for steel, carpenters, and poor crews. And then we ran that to identify the result. Now, I want to show you guys a couple other examples of how you can run schedules in Alice. So this is a saturation analysis where we say saturate crews and flood it with resources to see how we can recover. Pick a color. One of the funniest parts is when you run so many schedules that you actually start to run out of colors. And now let's look at reducing our crew sizes. So let's use Alice Analytics for this. So looking at our carpenter crew, we can see that although we've allowed for 10, most of the time Alice is only using eight, but we may be able to get pretty close to the same result by reducing it to six crews. What about on the structural steel? We see here that most of the time there's a darker shade on the structural steel and most of the time Alice is using these A crews. So let's run a schedule reducing it from 10 to 8, but we probably don't want to go under 8. What about our poor crews? Data showing us that we can make some reductions here. What about the crown crew? Looks like if we reduce the crown crew, we may have some delays because the two crews are being consistently utilized by Alice. So let's run these schedules. Go to six on the carpenter crews and six on the poor crew. And let's keep the structural crew at eight. Let's also saturate the equipment to see if that there's any different mixes of equipment that we can actually use. And let's not change our rates. Now let's try the same schedule but reducing the bridge, the crown crew from two to one. Now I'm going to hide some of these dots so we can just look at the newer schedules. This was the recovery schedule with a 10% reduction in crews in order to achieve social distancing. You can see that our finish date is now November 17th, which is actually 
one day away from the baseline on the finished state. Now we can see that Alice is running new schedules. And while Alice is doing these schedule runs, uh, we can actually uh, do another poll and answer some questions. Great, Juan, there's three questions that have come in. Um, let me start with the first. Uh, the first question says, due to unprecedented times, there are changes in policy and legislation occurring daily. How flexible is Alice when it comes to making changes in order for the project to be in compliance with new regulations? Okay, sorry, can you repeat the second part of that question one more time? Sure, actually, I'll read the whole thing yeah, again. Yeah, thank you. Due to unprecedented times, there are changes in policy and legislation occurring daily. How flexible is Alice when it comes to making changes in order for the project to be in compliance with new regulations? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. We're seeing jobs are changing daily. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty whether jobs will start up in May or in June. And we're seeing that they're having to increase uh, a lot of safety on site. Actually, this week, Cal OSHA released new safety regulations for how sites can be managed. And uh, you actually, you know, you definitely need to have the ability to quickly reshuffle your resources or your plan. And this is really where AI and software like Alice can really help you because you just really have to understand what is the change and then run the numbers and understand how that's going to impact your schedule. So uh, absolutely, you know, this is, we're actually finding that most of the time our clients were using Alice in pre-construction to identify the best plan, optimize the budget before they started construction. But now a lot of clients are taking Alice actively into construction because they realize that their plans are constantly changing. There's going to be a lot of impacts that will need to go into litigation and they'll need, need to be able to show these reductions in productivity. And at the same time, in order to provide clients with a sense of security in their investment, they need to show that they have options to recover the plans. So, you know, we've been really busy the last couple of months deploying Alice on many new and ag active projects that are dealing with delays and want to understand how they can quickly reshuffle, resequence, and analyze. Great. Thank you. The, um, do you want to take another question right now or do you want to yeah. wait? Yeah, we can do another question. Okay. Um, so the second question is, uh, how is how is idle time calculated it, um, in terms of non-working days like Sundays and also non-working hours such as from 5 p.m. to 6 a.m.? Yeah, great question. Uh, so on idle time, and it, typically we're only calculating it for your crews based on working hours. So if there's a 40-hour week, the idle time is calculated on that 40-hour work week. If they work 30 hours, it would be 10 hours of idle time. On your equipment, we actually look at it on a 24-hour calendar basis. So uh, if you re rent that equipment for a month, you're paying for the full month. Therefore, we're looking at it through the lens of, hey, uh, that, I, that equipment could be used on the weekends or that equipment could be used at nights. And getting that equipment off the job sooner frees it up to go to another job. So we all have also uh, looking at what we call kind of selective optimization, where you can actually determine how you want to, how you calculate our cost or how you want to. But most of the folks are just finding that this is a new level of detail to understand how efficient their plan is and compare it against different plans. Fantastic. Um, there is a third question. Just let me know when you, if you would like to take that now or if you'd like to do it later. Yeah, we can do that now. Okay. The third question that came in is, is there a way to review as-built activities and resources to compare actuals versus forecasted production and productivity? For example, determine if a contractor met its plan, and can you use this data to create better plans in the future? Yeah, that's a really good question. So absolutely, what the way that most of our clients use Alice right now is that they get the insights, they get the plans from Alice. And by the way, I think this is important to mention, uh, you have your Gantt here, which can also be exported to CSV or to P6 and XER or XML. 
So clients will generate their plans in Alice and then export their schedules and use the P6, you know, uh, for contractual purposes and also continue to update the P6. They can also come in now and identify, um, let's say, uh, you know, usually they're as built in, in, in their original schedule, but you can come in and put in the, the updates. Let's say, hey, we estimated it was going to take 10 hours, but it actually took eight. You can come in and update those production rates or those durations and understand how it's impacting your project. Now, uh, what you can do right now is from your current as built date, it's important to know Alice will only schedule what you apply recipes to. So let's say you completed most of this tower uh, and you're at the 30th floor. You would only apply recipes from level 30 up and Alice would optimize that plan. We are working on some additional new features that will be coming out this summer where you can actually manage and actively as built your project uh, in real time. And that's, that's definitely uh, something that folks are excited about. But what we currently do now with active projects is they manage them through their you know, traditional P6 software. And they really come to us to look at, hey, how can we optimize and how can we track this historical data? So if we estimated it was gonna take this duration and now it, you know, we actually know it took this long, uh, being able to update that for future projects. So your recipes do become your company database on how you are building. Uh, and so your recipes continue to get smarter and smarter as you gather more data. And then you can use that to make more informed decisions on future projects. So Juan, I don't have any other yeah. questions coming in from the customers at this point. Um, so I don't know if you're ready to go through more in the presentation. Yeah, absolutely. So another unique perspective that we really get at Alice is we're working on some of the most complex and largest projects all over the world. And uh, because of that, we really get to work in some interesting, remote and exciting areas on building critical infrastructure and commercial projects as well. And our clients uh, have been working closely with us on forecasting and understanding the impact of COVID on their projects. And so uh, many of our clients actually like to share that information as the industry is pretty fragmented. It can be helpful to know what's happening in Europe or what's happening in North America and Asia as we prepare for this new era of construction. And so in North America, we've shared with many clients in Asia and Europe that construction is also halted due to shelter in place orders. In California, these restrictions were expected to be lifted on May 5th. Some of them have been extended, uh, but critical activities like construction, we believe are going to be allowed to start up again. Uh, job sites have much enhanced safety as we referenced temperature testing, uh, hot water hand washing stations, uh, reduced capacity uh, at, the, at the entrance of the job site, on the, on the floor site, and also on the, on the lift. And in pre-construction, we're seeing that owners are really reevaluating our budgets. Uh, projects are being put on hold, and now we're seeing some projects come back to life. And construction is very FaceTime oriented. Folks really want to, uh, you know, have that face-to-face -face communication, have that collaboration. And so there's definitely been challenges around digital collaboration. And this is true in North America, Asia, and Europe. So folks are having to work from home with limited internet connection. Uh, folks are having to adapt to using you know, new collaboration tools like Teams and Zoom. Uh, but the good news is that the construction industry has seen a lot of innovation in the last 10 years, and they're well prepared for these changes. Now, in North America, the situation remains fluid. One of the big concerns that folks are citing is the workforce and what that labor force is gonna look like when they come back to work. Uh, there's been concerns that a lot of workers have been lost to actually going back to, to work in more rural areas or going back to Mexico. Uh, or some workers just don't even want to show up because they'd rather collect unemployment and think that it's going to benefit them and it, it's going to be safer for them even. 
So they're having to actively deal with projects that are changing. Some guys are losing 30, 40% of their crews from our conversations we were having. And then we're also seeing the same impact in Europe where construction has been halted. Folks are trying to figure out how do we get back to work? And there's been significant furloughs of non-essential staff. Now, our partners in Asia were actually some of the first to let us know of the COVID impacts in early January. They actually told us they were going into shelter in place as early as February uh, in Japan and in Singapore. And due to this early action, they were actually able to slow down and the, slow down the curve and actually get back to work by March. So in March, folks were uh, back in the office with masks and job sites were active again. However, we've most recently found out that job sites were shut down and most of the countries have gone into lockdown again as new cases continue to rise. So that's a really important warning from our friends, uh, you know, from, from what we're seeing in the global trends that it's not only about getting back to work, but how we get back to work and how we're able to preserve social distancing, new safety and new measures to actually continue working productively and safely. So Juan, I'd like to launch that last poll that we have to better understand some of the challenges our attendees are facing. So the attendees you'll see um, coming up on your screen will be a quick poll around what challenges you're, um, you're dealing with right now. And we hope that you can share that information with us. Juan, while our attendees are, uh, um, are taking the poll or answering the poll, um, there is another question around the level of detail that is needed um, for a model to work in Alice. Yeah, um, so that's definitely a question that often comes up uh, is, you know, we don't have a model or the model is not ready. And, uh, you know, it's important to understand that what we use in Alice is a construction information model. And so the model is a representation of the work in place. But all the detail that goes into building that is actually in your recipes. And so this is why you can use a very low level of detail. So LOD 100 or 200, maybe even a schematic plan. Uh, for many of our clients, we develop these conceptual models in a day or two. And that's enough information to start planning in Alice with a lot of intelligence because that knowledge and data is in your recipes. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll right now so that we can go ahead and share. We've got some good information here. It's actually pretty interesting. Let me um, let me share the results. So Juan, hopefully you can see on your screen um, what our attendees have shared with us around um, the challenges that their projects are uh, facing. Yes. Really interesting and definitely in sync with uh, what we're seeing, material delays on especially steel and glass, uh, shortage of crews and social distancing and, and how we really get back to work while preserving social distancing. And, you know, we thank you guys for joining us. And, uh, you know, during these, these difficult times, we really have been there for our clients and would like to also help you in any way possible to leverage the power of artificial intelligence and generative construction simulations to model impacts and recover your plans. So I think to wrap, yeah, to wrap things up for today, we do appreciate everyone attending. Um, but before we end, um, Juan, do you want to talk, do you want to go through any last um, of the simulations that you just ran? Yeah, let's see. So we can see here, uh, that's the last thing I wanted to close with. Uh, when we did these trickle down analysis, we found that we actually capped out on the available crews. Uh, but we were able to see with the saturation of crews how we could get back to another schedule. And we can actually open one of those up here.
typically these models load pretty quickly, but since this is a, a substantially large project, it may take a little bit of time. While we're waiting for that to open, does anyone have any questions? You can um, use the raise your hand functionality in the GoToWebinar uh, console, and we're happy to take any uh, questions online as well. Well, uh, we look at wait for any additional questions, we can look at some of these analytics. So we can see with the saturation analysis in this scenario, Alice brought up to 20 carpenters, but most of the time it was using really 10. And we can look at that across the board now with our equipment. Even though we told Alice that it had no limitation on the quantity of equipment, it only used one crane. Similarly, let's look at our pump trucks. With a saturation of pump trucks, so no limitation of pump trucks, Alice used at peak six different trucks, um, <clears throat> you know, looking at six different simultaneous pours, but most of the time it was able to use four and three. Juan, there is a last question that just came in, um, if I can add that in here. Um, the yeah. question is around um, whether Alice runs in the cloud or if there's a local installation. Yeah, great question. So Alice is cloud-based. So all of this can be accessed as long as you have an internet connection and uh, you can access it uh, you know, from a laptop, your job site. I've actually even run it on, on an iPad or from my, uh, from my Wi-Fi connection uh, tethering off my phone. So we definitely make it as accessible as possible for folks. And that's one of the benefits of Alice is that you can access it from anywhere and you can collaborate with multiple people. So you can have everyone working within the software at the same time. Uh, maybe one person setting up your recipes and another person is actually building out your uh, support relationships. Great. I don't have any. There are no other um, questions that have come in unless someone has. Um, if you do have another question, please uh, either mark the raise your hand functionality or you can submit it through the questions portal. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us oh. and listening in today. Yeah, I'm sorry. There is one last one. Is there a mobile app available? Not yet. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, currently, Alice is is. Uh, you mainly used for desktop or for laptop. Uh, so we don't have mobile yet, but uh, definitely something that we're looking at in the future, bringing Alice to the field. And yeah, if, you, if you'd if you love to learn more uh, about Alice and how we can help you on your projects, please reach out to us. If you're already an Alice user and you wanna learn how to do some of these methods on your project, like uh, the trickle down or the fractional reduction of crews, or modeling the impact on reduced man lift productivity, uh, please reach out to us. And also you can check out our support page where we do a lot of the Alice best practices are provided. Thank you so much for joining us. I wish you all good health and uh, hope that we can all get back to job sites real soon. Great, Juan, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our attendees for coming to our session today. We do wanna let you know that Alice will be hosting the second part of this three-part War Room series at the end of May. We'll be sending information out for that session soon and hope you're able to join us for it. The third part will come at the end of June. We appreciate your attendance and have a good day or good evening. We'll end the recording now.